So, just like in chapter two, two events A and B are called mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes in common. In other words, mutually exclusive events cannot occur simultaneously. Up here, if I picked a number from between one and 10, it could be odd, it could be a multiple of four, but there is no such thing as a multiple of four that is odd. No multiple of four is odd. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. You can go on forever. None of those numbers are gonna be odd. It is impossible for those two events to occur simultaneously. Whereas here, there's plenty of odd multiples of three. Three, nine, uh, 15, 21, 27. These are all odd multiples of three. There are also even multiples of three, but the point is those two events could occur simultaneously, so they are not mutually exclusive. Again, if you drew a Venn diagram, multiples of three and odd numbers, one, three, five, six, seven, nine, Again, you've got all sorts of overlap here. You've got stuff that occurs outside of both, but because there's overlap, these are not mutually exclusive. That mutually exclusive thing, just like in chapter 10 when we were counting our ors, is going to affect our ors here. Probability of or. If you've got any two events, it's going to be, you can add the two original probabilities. If it's easier just to talk about the two original probabilities, you can add those together. But you have to subtract this overlap that you would double count. This is the same formula from Chapter 10 and from Chapter 6. The size of a union was equal to the sum of the two different sets but we had to subtract the intersection. Again, that's why I keep giving you these tables because this is not a new formula. You don't have to try and memorize a new formula. You know this formula already. It's just written a slightly different way. But again, if the two events are mutually exclusive, just like they were up here, then you could take your five odd numbers plus your two multiples of four and get to seven. You can just add because the overlap is just zero. You're really just subtracting a big fat zero here because they're mutually exclusive. Same formula, I just subbed the zero in. So we can try to use these formulas to leverage to be faster. I didn't need these formulas up here because I had the explicit set. I could just go through and mark off everything that was favorable. And if I hit something twice in a row, I just knew that I didn't need to count it twice but I can use these formulas so that I don't have to be able to explicitly list. Again, I can count much bigger items like we could in chapter 10 without needing to explicitly list them, which becomes infeasible at a certain point. If I draw a single card from a standard deck, the probability that it will be spade or red. Remember, spades are this suit. They are black by default. There's 13 spades, and these are mutually exclusive events. So, I don't need to worry about any level of overlap here. Half of the deck is red. There's 26 red cards, all the hearts and the diamonds. And so, in total, I'm looking at 13 out of 52, plus 26 out of 52, for a total of 39 out of 52, which is 3 fourths. We're basically saying what's the probability that if you draw a card at random, it's a spade, a heart, or a diamond. It's kind of like saying what's the probability that it's not a club. These are the same basic questions. <laughs> what about here? Amy plans to spend somewhere from 1 to 6 hours on her homework. If X is the number of hours she spends on a night, rounded to the nearest hour, so what's the probability she spends one or two or three or four or five or six hours on her homework? The probabilities are given here. And you'll notice that the sum is equal to one. 
In other words, she's going to spend some amount of time on her homework. There is a 0% chance that she doesn't touch her homework at all. Here's the percentages for the different number of hours. The probability that she spends fewer than three hours. Again, these are all mutually exclusive. She can't spend one and two hours on Tuesday night. She either spends one hour or two hours. So fewer than three hours is basically saying one or two. We're going to take that 0 0.05 plus our 0 0.1 and get that there is a 15% chance she spends less than three hours on her homework. More than two is like saying three or four or five or six. In total, we've got 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.25 plus 0.1, which is 0 0.85. There's an 85% chance she's going to spend more than two hours on her homework. She's got a lot of homework. More than one, but no more than five. In other words, more than one, but at most five, is this region here. We're talking two or three or four or five. So 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.3 plus 0.25 is going to give us a total of also 0.85. So she's equally likely to spend more than two hours as she is somewhere between one and five. Fewer than five hours. That puts my cutoff here at fewer than five. We're saying, what's the probability she spends one or two or three or four hours? 0.05 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0.3. 0 0.65. There's like a 65% chance she spends less than five hours on her homework. So we can answer a few different types of probability questions, being able to read tables, being able to know how to interpret ors and nots and the like. Let's see another example here. Probability that a single card is drawn from a deck it will be a diamond or a face card. These are not mutually exclusive events. Your face cards are your queen, your king, and your jack. So there are 12 face cards total because you have a jack, queen, king of hearts, a jack, queen, king of diamonds, a jack, queen, king of clubs, a jack, queen, king of spades. Your diamonds, there are 13 of them. So our starting point is going to be to add these two together. But I have to subtract the probability of getting a diamond face card. And there are three of those. There's the jack of diamonds, the queen of diamonds, and the king of diamonds. That's going to give me a total probability of 22 out of 52 which simplifies to 11 out of 26. These are our fundamental probability questions, knowing how to read and interpret. And we can kind of dive in a little bit faster than we could in Chapter 10 because we're just leveraging all of our Chapter 10 tools to say, let's count. But now we're building a fraction rather than just counting a total and then being done, saying how many ways can you get a jack, get a face card or a diamond? We're saying... What's the probability? What's the likelihood? This is a more realistic question. I mean, honestly, as much as I could explain to you why we needed combinatorics previously, it felt kind of arbitrary to say, we're just counting. This is something we use all the time. We ask the question, how likely all the time in the world? And to answer how likely very frequently, we need those methods from chapter 10. Knowing how to count helps us answer, how likely am I? Of 20 elective courses, Emily plans to enroll in one, which she will choose by throwing a dart at the schedule of courses. So, 
Six courses are recreational. Eight courses are interesting. Three are both. Find the probability she chooses a course that has at least one of the tr two attributes. So we're saying what's the probability that her course is recreational or interesting? Okay, so there's 20 courses. She's going to hit one of them. We're going to do probability of recreational plus probability of interesting minus probability of both. This is the both scenario, the overlap. There's 20 total courses. This is an idealized world. She's not going to miss, or if she does miss, she just goes, gets the dart, comes back, throws it again. Each one's equally likely. So if we assume she's going to keep going until she actually manages to hit the dart board, this is what we're looking at. There are six recreational courses, eight interesting courses, three courses that are both. That's going to give us a total of 11 out of 20. There's an 11 out of 20 chance that she hits a course that's either recreational or interesting. And so if she's hoping to get one of those, those are, those are that's a pretty good probability. That's over 50%. She's more than likely to get a course that's either recreational or interesting.